Here we have an ICO 1064 power supply. I believe that it was sold around 1963 for around $50. I'll see if I can look up a, a spec on it. Um, it has 12 volt 10 amp and 6 volt 20 amp. It has the DC output. It's a Variac type design. Uh, the variable portion of the transformer is on the output side of the 120 transformer. Power on off switch and FEUs. Uh, it's in fairly good shape. I have used it since about, oh, I don't know, 1975. Generally, uh, what I use it for is just to top off a battery and to run high current 12 volt systems. I am in need of a 12 volt power supply that's high current, low ripple. Um, I have got some upcoming projects of some audio equipment and some mobile uh, CBs that uh, I'll be working on and I need this unit operating. So let's see if we can even uh, get this thing fired up. So looking at it, it looks like this capacitor is dried up. Here is our full wave bridge. I believe that this is a choke. This is a thermal relay. Here is our transformer. And our cap is a is two five thousand microfarad at twenty volts. Okay, I think the first thing I need to do is remove the the leads here from the this filter capacitor. That way I can check out both the choke and the coil. I think what I'll do is just clip them. Now since both of these two are the same value, it really doesn't matter where this goes to. The ground is hidden up underneath of here. Now if the cap is removed, I should be able to measure the choke. Maybe I should remove the, the leads here of the rectifier. Let's label these as plus and as minus. As AC and AC. Okay, now. And I am measuring half an ohm. Let's do that again. Yeah. That's yeah, pretty much a 
dead short there. So the choke is okay. Let's take a look at the transformer. Let's measure the input first. Okay, I'm not getting anything there. Let's check the fuse. Oh, there is no fuse. Okay, well, let me go find the fuse. Okay, the front calls for a 5 amp. And I've got a 5 amp here. Let me verify that that is a 5 amp. Yes, 5 amp. Okay. Now let's measure the leads here. Input we have two and a half ohms. The output now we should have two outputs. We should have the low and the high. So here is one leg that would be going to the rectifier. Looks like we've got a wire cut here. I believe that this is the high side, so I don't think we're going to see a difference when I adjust the meter. Maybe we are. Maybe this is the low side. We'll have to take a look at that. It looks like right at the very edge of the... the run. And I'm not getting connection there. Okay, the other side... One is going to the switch, the other one is going to here. There's something wrong with that. 
Okay. Let's pull out the transform or the, the filter cap. Boy, that's heavy. That is real heavy. That's solid plastic. Look at the thickness of that. I'm going to just take a second and remove this outer ring and just see what that what that inside looks like. Yep, I would say that that's dried up. Okay, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get this out. some tar in here. Okay, I'm going to go wash this out. I'll be right back. Okay, I washed it out. This little crack that developed here when I was prying on it, I think I'm going to try to put a little super glue in it and we'll see what happens. Okay, these were 5,000. I don't have any 5,000 in stock, but I do have these Nichicon 6800s. That should work fine in there. Now, I can't get two side by side, but if I stack them, they're pretty close. If I were to reverse this and stack it, I think that's what I'll do. So now looking at the wires that came off of that, I think I need some pretty heavy wire on that. I'll be right back. Okay, I found some of this two-wire cord here. What I'll do is attach it and bring it on around but first I think I want to find out why the 
the variac portion of this is hanging up. I've got to figure out how to get this cast uh, this chassis apart here. So I'll be right back. Okay, they've made this really difficult to take apart. I want to show you what is happening here. Okay, so as I'm adjusting the Variac, you can see a ground wire there. So if I put my finger here without very much tension, I can get that wire to ride on this metal rod. So what I think I'm going to try to do is put a zip tie in here. That looks like that might work. Let me grab the hot glue gun and we'll try it. It was right here where I wanted it. Let's see if we can't get the hot glue in here. Okay. Yeah, that works pretty good. I decided to put a little piece of tape over here. Uh, with all the varnish on here, it feels pretty good, but I could see that after several hundred movements of that, that you might break through that grounding strap. And it wouldn't really matter if it did. Uh, this is hooked to chassis ground. It wouldn't really matter. Okay, let's put this off to the side and work on the caps. Well, we're at the 20 minute mark, so I decided to break this up into two parts. If you found this video useful or entertaining, please subscribe. 
give me a thumbs up and don't forget to click on the bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos. Stay safe, stay healthy, and thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.